Blog Talk Radio. The Alan Alford Short Talk Show. The Alan Alford Short Talk Show. Your host is here for the show tonight to interview our special guest. Everybody, welcome everybody to another great episode of the Alan Alfred Sports Talk Show. I'm Alan, so delighted to have you join us tonight on this wonderful Friday evening. You got the right place. Feel free to chime in here at any point during the live stream and live broadcast at 516-418-5572. And it's 516-418-5572. We got a lot of great things to discuss. We're going to have a fantastic show for you. I promise you that. Definitely don't forget that number, 516-418-5572. But before we get the show officially started, let's go ahead and thank our wonderful sponsor, Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. So delicious and addicting, you may need a support group. Definitely don't forget to visit Chef G's right here in beautiful Tampa, Florida. You know, you can't go wrong coming down here to Tampa. Come on down to 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. And if you can't come down to Tampa, you're a little bit out of your stretch, a lot of it out of your reach, that's all right. Come on down to 301. It's come on down to right here at FLBBQSauce.com, and it's FLBBQSauce.com. You cannot go wrong with this awesome sauce. Classic fusion, honey mustard, and heat wave for the ones who want to bring that heat. Get them all at flbbqsauce.com. There's some great rub there, too. You can check in Florida sand. Definitely, you cannot go wrong. Some delicious stuff. In fact, tomorrow morning, you know I'm going to have a great Saturday because I'm starting off the day eating breakfast with the one and only Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. So, in fact, all of the music today is sponsored by none other than showstopper, songwriter Sam Scola and his wife, Want to thank them both, Sam Scola and his wife, Mary. All of Sam Scola's songs that are going to be played throughout tonight are available through YouTube and Spotify.com. And definitely, we're going to go ahead. If you want to reach out and give Sam a chance to sign him, sing along with Sam. Sing along with Sam at gmail.com. Let me go ahead and play one of his great tunes. This is the Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce song. And let me go ahead and play that song for you guys right now. Again, that's the Chef G's. Florida Barbecue Sauce song by Sam Scola. That's coming on to you right now. Here we go. Comes in for variety, Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. A natural flavor, Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. Florida gold honey mustard on burgers and ribs. Tasty fusion on pork and sausage. A classic taste for chicken steak chips. A hot heat wave on meatballs and ham. 
It's a cookout treat. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Serve on fish and vegetables. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce, so delicious and addicting, you may need a support group. Definitely don't forget to get that great sauce at 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. Can't come down to Tampa? That's all right. FLBBQSauce.com. Again, that's FLBBQSauce.com. We're going to have a wonderful show for you. In fact, we're going to get it started off right now, bringing on a fantastic guest for you here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. Let's go. Let's bring that wonderful guest on. Hey, how you doing so far tonight, Lou? All right, Alan. Well, now we're getting the good upsets. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And we just had the one day Yale over uh, one of their games. <laughs> ah, I, I took it. Oh, yeah. So things are definitely a little different now, right? Now they are. Man. You know, do you think it's ever possible for you to ever win that bracket? Uh, no. (laughs) Yeah, that's tough. It's tough, you know. I realize everybody wants a bracket anyway. You don't want to see someone win it? I don't see how anybody can win it. Yeah, I mean, you got a great point. I'm telling you, I'd rather go for the Powerball or the Lotto. I think you have a better shot. I really do. I think you have a better shot winning the Powerball or Lotto because there's just so many different combinations. Even if you have a very, very good bracket, there's just so many twists and turns that can happen for you to, you know, to mess up your bracket. And one little miss, you're out. There's always a Cinderella team. There's always a favorite that gets knocked out earlier than you expect. So those things are going to happen, but which team is going to fold? Which team is going to come out of nowhere, you know? That's where you never right. know. But yeah, it's 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 a lot. You're right. You never know with that bracket and Also, I wanted to get that from you. In fact, let our great viewers know when is the big game? You mean the final game? Yeah. April 8th. April 8th, folks. You heard it here first on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. April 8th from Lou. That is fantastic. That he I've been knows doing that. the Final Four show on the 6th. Yeah, so that's that's awesome. And yeah, so that is uh, something to really, really look out for. It's going to be great. And I'm so glad that you told us that. Any favorites you have? Any Sneak picks that you UConn. might have? UConn, you got Texas. You, UConn and Texas. You can't go wrong with that. That's for sure. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, so you you got some great picks there, man. Tell you. I know you get excited about it, too. This is my time of year. <laughs> You're more excited about, you know, the the bracket or UFL? You well. <laughs> oh, what, what? I think you said UFL. I think you said UFL, folks. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to be honest, we'll, to be honest, we'll do it. We'll do a rundown that tomorrow. See, I'll run down the teams. Think about how you think this is gonna go. Uh, I say after the first commercial of the of the first game, the league will be canceled. I don't know about that. Now, I I don't well, think. All I want to do is give you a lack of interest. Goodbye. I definitely do think they're going to play the season. They already have the, the, Hey, they advertise like crazy, the super bowl, their super bowl on June 16th. And right. so I, I definitely do think it's going to go through at least a year, but so I, I you know, so it's not going to be another AAF. You know, 
I, I uh, will say I do have some concerns. I, I'm not going to lie. I do have some concerns. Houston, we have a problem. And I'll just yeah. say it like that. For the listening audience, I'm definitely going to be talking about the UFL and the AFL a bit later. But you want to stick around and hear more insight I'm going to give you about the UFL. And I hate to say Lou said so, but I'm leading in his direction. There's a lot more I'm going to reveal on that topic. But I will say, Houston, we have a problem. Mm-hmm. I thought so. <laughs> you know, and the thing that I would say this much to give you guys who are listening and want to hear, you know, the rest I'm going to talk about later in the show, this goes back to what I was talking about earlier. You know, the fact that you merge is not – it's actually not a bad thing. That's actually pretty good. But the fact yeah. that you're starting the season on March 30th is not – I'm starting to feel it even more so now. And I said it back then that I felt like that was a concern. You're talking yeah. about, you're talking about, you know, the final, uh, you're talking about the bracket. Major League Baseball is kicking off, which I'm going to talk more about that too for you folks on March 27th. Game one, opening oh, yeah. day. Yeah. You know, and that, that's, the same weekend is when the season kicks off. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the things I said that that's going to be a problem. I felt like the timing of the season with the XFL was great. Two weeks later, you get started. So people who still in love with football, still in a high with the Super Bowl, they can get right back into it. When you have this lull and then you start off when you got two, three other competent, two, three competitors. Yeah. That's an issue. Okay. But I tell you one thing that's not an issue is Lou delivering. I want to ask you a question though. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Shoei Otani and the interpreter getting busted for doing shady stuff? Oh boy! Just when we thought everything was all said and done, set in stone, and Otani's going to have a great career, we get this mess. Oh, beautiful. Oof. Yeah. And there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of uh, flack going on with. Um, from the uh, players' union, there's some, there's uh, little problems with that too, and it's in violation of the agreement. So uh, that might be something that uh, be uh, checking in, uh, interested as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you would think that yeah. Shoei Otani, <laughs> being from Japan and and things of that nature, yeah. nature, that he was kind of like those, he was the exception to the rule. You know, you don't usually hear that from guys from aboard, from abroad, from, you know, whether it be Japan, Korea, you usually don't hear that. Usually they stick together, but yes. obviously when it comes to money and influence on in that situation, that sometimes rears ugly head, no matter where you're from. And there, we obviously got a chance to see that with Shoei Otani. Greed yeah. and, and money, <laughs> those are nationwide, apparently. Yeah, and there's another thing, you know, like I said, with the, uh, with the Players Association, uh, I'll just give you a, a quick rundown. Um, actually, mm, well, this is a bit long, so maybe I, should, maybe I shouldn't. It's, it's one of those articles that seems like a, like a book no, that runs like uh, 10 pages long. Yeah, if you could give us a scaled down version of what happened, we would love to hear. Yeah, well, in the advent of a Zoom call on Monday that drew Major League Baseball fans uh, associated into chaos, a veteran player who was nameless done the mutiny that had fallen in front of him and said, "What the?" Over the early over nearly three hours, he said, "I don't win." this years of pent up frustration for players unleashed by the Players Association leadership at the moment at the end of the meeting burned itself into his mind. Early in the afternoon, a coordinated effort by the by players had unfolded to replace uh, Bruce Mayer, that's M E Y E R, the union's deputy executor and labor board negotiator, or dictator as the case may be, uh, with Harry Marino, the lawyer who organized minor league, uh, minor league baseball players who eventually would become members of the Players Association. Near the end of the call, the matter had been an informal poll, and a significant majority of the dozens of players in attendance raised their hands in favor of change. 
faith with hard, with handpicked number two, receiving a no confidence vote from the large portion of the union's executive board. Oh, this is getting weird. The player association executive board director Tony Clark and the group that it was his decision whether mayor should be removed from his job. He was not wrong. Union rules grant Clark, not the players, the right to hire and fire. But the sentiment, but the sentiment exposed by Clark at that moment, spoiled at players uh, through the game, throughout the game, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, enveloping the union with the sort of uh, place intrigue typically reserved for uh, something like HBO series. Which one? That they didn't say. Oh, oh boy. Uh, the veteran was among a large swath of players troubled by Clark's comment after hearing from him say consistently over more than a decade ro- ruling, running the player association that runs the union. The fog cast questions across the rank and rank and file, not just about mayor's murky future, but Clark's long term viability as executive director. Okay. This should be interesting, folks. Wow, yeah, definitely. That's some insight right there, Lou. You're doing great. Yeah. Man. And just think that Funk Broadcasting School. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that that's fantastic. Yeah. And just think that we've passed the audition. Yeah. yeah. I hope we so. pass the audition. Oh, oh, oh boy. Yeah, so it seemed like you got it. Got to <laughs> well, it was. It was. Yeah. So, I'll yeah, Lou. Yeah. I'm curious so, anyway, to hear. We, yeah, we got, Go a slew of, we got a slew of information tomorrow. You know we're going to be talking the basketball uh, champion, the uh, basketball tournament, both men's and women's, and maybe a little bit of NIT. I won't dive into that too much, for obvious reasons. Um, We'll wrap up spring training. Uh, we'll we'll uh, review the first two games in the official, unofficial uh, start of the year, depending how you look at it. So if somebody say, nah, it's not official. The official's next week. Well, you know, although their games have started. So you can argue that if you want. Um, yes, we'll also uh, preview the other football league, as I call it. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> the other football yeah, league. Uh, yeah, counting down to the end of the NHL and NBA regular seasons. Um, we'll have your w, uh, WWE slash UFC. Maybe if well, if my expected um, resident NASCAR uh, uh, expert will be there, hopefully then we'll do that. And also I'll cover some PGA golf because uh, I know there was an event last week. I didn't really touch much on it. Uh, Call it the six majors of the uh, PGA season. And uh, that would be? Yeah. And th- that would be? The six major? The open? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There is a six. Well, it's it's called, it's, uh, it's kind of like the six major. Okay. The Players' Championship. Oh, yes. The Players' Championship. That's right. There you go. That's a big yeah. tournament. Got that yeah, right. The, the, and they got the South Bar Championship going on right now, and right there's six majors that uh, actually exist. You have the four, you have the big four. You got the Masters coming up. You have the U.S. Open in June. You have the PGA uh, Championship, which used to be in August. Now it's May. You have the Open. Oh, that's kind of a weird name. Just the Open. And of course, we just mentioned the Players Championship, but you also, but we also forgot about the fifth major, which is called. Yeah, the, we have the fifth major, the open. Nope, the Memorial. Oh, yeah. Yep, that's right. The Memorial. <laughs> fifth major. Yeah, so that's awesome, man. Yeah. So we'll have all that, of course, all regular features. Um, the Ridiculous Sign of the Week, Sports Trivia, This Week in Sports History, the Feel Good Story of the Week, and, of course, your thoughts and comments are always welcome. So it's uh, 512-543-4662. Again, five one two five four three four six six two. Please remember, it's on the East Coast time, not the Central or the West Coast, or out in the, or out in the, or out in the Australia, or whatever. Because I know people get that confused. 
Yeah, that's right. It's it's 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Zone tomorrow, Saturday. And you can catch Lou on the Enhanced Sports Show right here on YouTube. Just type in Enhanced Sports Show. That's right. Nice chance to see him right there. And you could always call in 512-543-4662. Again, it's 512-543-4662. You also can do something really cool and subscribe to not only his channel, but you can subscribe to get some great features as well. Tell us about that, the subscription, the paid subscription part. Right. What you got to do is go to YouTube, and you'll see him um, sign down at the bottom of the screen where it says you can subscribe to uh, the YouTube channel, uh, $3,000 a month. No, no, four ninety five per month. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, that, includes, that includes tax. Uh, man, you can subscribe and, you know, you become a um, member of the show. My numbers of that have gone up, actually. I've been now close to 40 subscribers. So, uh, you know, I thank all of you for doing it, and let's keep it coming. So I hope we are uh, having more subscribers, you know, like before the, uh, let's say, uh, the end of the spring. That's awesome. You going up, man. That's keep it up, folks. Make sure you continue to support Lou. He got he went up in subscribers. Congratulations on that. <laughs> now remember, man, keep my word for you, guys. Now remember, I appreciate, it, but we actually don't know who the subscribers are. They do not give the names of these subscribers. So if you don't see your name on it, I am sorry, but that's just how it is. We uh we don't know why that happens, but it just does happen. We don't know. We don't have uh, the subscribers' names who have done it. But whoever did, thank you. That's right. You know, that's – hey, you're moving up in this world of becoming a celebrity. So when you're a celebrity – like the, the, the cool thing about being a celebrity or an athlete is that everybody knows you. You, unfortunately, don't know everyone else, but they know you. Right. That's for sure. You know? That's 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 the life of celebrity. In fact, uh, you know, to, uh, but uh, the sad thing is that nobody from television has interviewed me yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, where that works? <laughs> yeah, so I've been interviewed that... on a few. I've been interviewed on, on somebody on a few other people's podcasts, but um, you know, nothing from like major radio or major television yet. Just keep grinding, you know. Getting on major TV is not as easy as people think it is. Even if you are somebody who's a celebrity or an athlete, it's it's the opportunity got to present itself, and it's yeah. just got to be one of the things that line up great. I, speaking from experience, I have been blessed to have been on a major network interview on CNBC. You can check that interview here on YouTube. Just type in Alan how'd Alford. How they get? How they get? How they get a hold of you? You know, it was just a, it was a blessing. And you know how it happened, what happened, Lou, was the opportunity came to me. And what mm-hmm. happened was the, the vice, the, uh, at the time, the COO of the company, vice president at the time, I'm sorry, the COO of the company, I, I, I want to make sure I had the title right, COO of the company, yeah. basically of a large insurance company, you know, said to me, he, he called me up and said, Alan, Becky Quick from CNBC wants to interview you. They heard about your book. They heard about you being a top seller. Do uh, you want to do this interview? And it was just like that. Ran right out of the blue, random. And I said, yes, I will. And Warren Buffett, they said, Warren Buffett heard about your book, heard about your top sales ability. Uh, he I just guess. asked a question. He said, do you want to do this interview? It was that quick. And it was that life changing. And I said, yes. It was instant, yes. But see, the thing about that opportunity, Lou, is that I jumped at it and took it. No one gave me a heads up like, hey, this opportunity might be coming your way. It, that in life, right. I'm glad you brought that up, Lou, because in life, when an opportunity is presented to you, folks, just like Eminem, you get one shot of one opportunity. You have to jump in it. A lot of people say, I want an opportunity. I want an opportunity. But sometimes they don't recognize the opportunity. They don't see it. You understand? Because right. it may not be as grandiose as they envision. No. Just out of the blue, I got a call, and it happened that quick. If I didn't do that interview, I'm telling you right now, Lou, I would have been feeling bad about it to this day. That was about four or five years ago. 
nothing worse than a missed opportunity. That's worse than not getting an opportunity, I feel, in life. Because if you never get an opportunity, to me, the what if is worse than the not getting opportunity, if that makes sense. That's a fate worse than death, man. Yeah. Yeah. The the what if, to me, is worse. Because at least if you never got the opportunity, you say, man, I keep, I'm just going to keep going for it. I'm going to hope that I get that opportunity. If you get the opportunity and you fumble a bag, that's worse. It. You you In life, I know people think that opportunities, they, they circle back around. They ask you once. They come back next week and ask you again. They come back the week after, in between the week. No, that's not how life goes, folks. It doesn't go like right. that. It does not go like that. It would be nice sometimes if it did, but it does not go like that. You usually get one shot. And I know, Lou, you do great work. You're awesome. Thanks. Opportunity is gonna, like that, right. Just recognize when that opportunity does come, and you take it. Well, I did. That's how it started 11 years ago. I saw an opportunity, you know, from a local organization, and uh, I was like, can anybody, you know, like, anybody do this? Well, we'll give you a shot. And then, uh, you know, as the thing is, a star was born. A star was born. That's right. When you get that opportunity, you got to run with it. You got to run like there's there's a yeah. you know a, a cheetah behind your back. You got to keep running. You got to run with it, and just don't look back. I've never regretted it. That's right, folks. You know, he's giving you some great advice. That hey, and yes, I can tell you, I got that opportunity to be on TV, and I'm very help- thankful for it. I, I'm very appreciative to this day of that because, you know, it's I, I'm glad that I did take advantage of it when it came my way. It was just out of the, Imagine that. you. So just, folks, I'm prepping you right now. You could be just going about your business, get a text or a phone call, and it could be the most important phone call of your life. Yeah. It just happens that quick. Yeah. And, I'm just looking, I'm just looking to get it by, by uh, well, by, I'm hoping to get, we have a yeah. station here in the New York area that uh, I would like to die to get on. So in the meantime, be prepping, be practicing, perfecting your craft in between the time. You understand? Just yes. keep perfecting your craft. And when the opportunity comes, you're going to walk Take right it. through it. Take it and, and with a smile on your face. And and understand yes. that you deserve that opportunity. Now you're getting it. Yes. Yeah, it's coming your way, Lou. It's coming your way. I feel I it. hope so. Just stay positive. You're going to get it. You know, it's, yeah. it's kind of like the iceberg. I love the, this, the iceberg analogy with success. A lot of people love to look at the top of an iceberg and look at somebody who's very successful, but they don't understand the layers below that. Most of the mass of an iceberg is below the surface, 80% of it. People just see the top of it, but you don't see all the work that went into it. You put a right. lot of work in it, Lou, and you're going to get there. I know so, buddy. Keep Stay positive. Just be the Lou that we know, and it's going to come your way. Trust me. Even if you a, a local TV station, that's fine with me. Yes. And in the meantime, don't blow up the smaller opportunities because the small opportunities could lead to the big opportunities. A lot of people – that's another thing, that a lot of people look for just the big opportunities. Sometimes you take some of the small opportunities, they'll lead you to the big opportunity. Don't blow yes. up the small ones either. No, no. Because that's how I started. I started small, which I think most of us do. Yeah, don't 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 blow up the small opportunities. You know, like <laughs> don't do it. Take advantage. <laughs> All right. Yes, I appreciate you, Lou. And don't forget, folks, don't forget to take advantage of that opportunity too. Between four and six p.m. tomorrow, definitely call Lou five one two five four three four six six two five one two. Five four three four six six two. I'm gonna be calling in. You guys need to do the same. Yeah, exactly. Awesome, Lou. Definitely looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. And I appreciate yep. you. I tremendously appreciate you here on the Allen right. Alfred Sports Show. You're the man. And we got another blowout that just went final. Purdue puts Grambling State to shame, seventy-eight to fifty. What a shock! Uh, uh, and say they score one more time. Seventy-eight to fifty, 
Purdue over Grambling, or rather Grumbling State, because they're probably Grumbling now with this loss, 78 to 50. <laughs> Breaking news. So I appreciate you yeah. giving us that. But no surprise. Latest news on the sports store scores there. Awesome. Yeah, but but no but no surprise. <laughs> so keep watching those brackets, people. Keep uh keep polishing up those brackets. Keep updating them. Yeah. yeah. Right. And remember, if you're feeling disgusted, it's because your bracket has been busted. <laughs> That's right. I appreciate yes, you. I saw that myself. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. At least I think I did. Yeah, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Okay, before uh, Diane kills me, I better go. All right. No problem at all, Lou. I appreciate you. Thanks, Don. You're welcome. Anytime. Okay. Really appreciate you. Thank you. Have a great night. Okay. I got to go. Yeah, so that's that's Lou right there. Appreciate Lou. Always appreciate Lou here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. It's wonderful to have him on board. And and yeah, folks, just you know, just to reiterate that is that take advantage of the small opportunities that you get because they could lead you to the big opportunities. You know, don't look out like this where there's great opportunities right by your feet and those opportunities are kind of like good for you to prepare for that big opportunity. That was the great thing about that interview that I got that Lou had brought up where I felt as if God, you know, God is always in control, but this is where he really helped me. I did a lot of smaller interviews, you know, as they would say, smaller, quote, unquote, smaller interviews with podcasts, radio, an AM station. I did quite a few interviews. And the key about them is they were live interviews. And not only were they live interviews, they were interviews that you just never knew who was listening on the other end. So you had to prepare as if it was a nationally syndicated interview because you never know who's listening. You never know who's watching. You never know who could stumble across an interview that you've done. So you have to bring your A game because you just hey, you just never know who's watching. Just never know. So the fact that I did all of those interviews when that it, that huge mega opportunity came, it relaxing because I said, you know what, Alan? You've already prepared for this. You've already went through the process of doing the practice. So there's nothing for you to really be nervous about. Think of it as one of the interviews you've been already doing. Got to make sure you present yourself well. Got to make sure you answer the question well. Be yourself and just relax and go ahead and be you. And that was just really what got me through it. And it was awesome. You know, it was a live interview, CNBC, Becky Quick. You can look at right here on YouTube. Just type in Alan Alfred, Becky Quick, or CNBC, and you'll pull it up. And that interview always reminds me that in life, you got to take advantage of opportunities because it just came like that. I got a text, and I, it was real early in the morning, so I knew that something was important. And instead of texting me back, the CEO of the company called me back. And I was like, uh oh, something's up. I didn't know what the, you know, if it was an opportunity. I, I thought he was just going to say, hey, somebody couldn't make it to this venue, this uh, convention, and you have to do double work. <laughs> That's what I was thought he was going to do. But no matter if he did say that, I was going to do the double work. You understand? So it, it, no matter what the man wanted, I was going to be a and, and be a good steward of that. But what he did say was, hey, Warren Buffett heard about your book, heard about you being an number one salesperson. What they're requesting is that you do this interview with Becky Quick tomorrow morning. Do you want to do this interview? And he ended it with a question, which meant that I was in the driver's seat. I was the one making the decision. He didn't ask to speak to my wife. He didn't ask to speak to my friend. He asked to speak and wanted to interview me. And I said, yes. Yes, I'll do it. And I said, I won't let you down. And he said, I know you won't let me down. I know. He was like confident. I was like, yeah, you're right. I won't let you down. <laughs> and I just ran with that opportunity. But life, you know, we're a sports show. You get opportunities like this. You know, I've had people who I've given them an opportunity to be on this show. 
and they have kind of hemmed it hard and and kind of like wishy-washy and stuff like that, well, guess what? I'm not circling a wagon to ask you again and again and again. I'm not doing that. You know, I've learned early doing this business, don't don't circle a wagon. So I'll ask you nicely, and if it goes great, that's wonderful. If you don't take advantage of that opportunity, I've had a lot of people actually regret not taking advantage of it because you you just never know. Because, again, people are doing this. They're looking out. They're looking out for that big mega yacht. Well, maybe that mega yacht's not there for you yet because you haven't worked up to it yet. You haven't done the small part to get to that big yacht. The big yacht might be there, but hey, you have to do some steps maybe before you get to that big yacht. And I see it all the time. You know, same thing with sports. Hey, take advantage of the small opportunities. It may not be, you know, grandiose. It may not be flamboyant. Never know what it can lead to. That's the key. Never know what it can lead to. And You know, uh, I will just say, uh, you know, this is a great segue because I'll show you my inside amazing event that I went to the baseball. Here we go. Let me show this on the screen. (laughs) That's awesome. Baseball, bourbon and cigars. There you go. Getting a little bit of glare on the light. So I'm just going to move it. But here, baseball, bourbon. And cigars brought to you by Florida Sports Hall of Fame. This event was at J.C. Newman Cigars right there in Tampa. This event was fantastic. Okay, props to Florida Sports Hall of Fame. Props to J.C. Newman. Props to Ebor City Tampa Baseball Museum because there's a lot of people from there. And Props to all of the great people that was there at that event. That included Gary Sheffield, Wade Boggs, Dexter Jackson, DJ Fresh from, you know, he's official DJ of the Tampa Bay Rays. Chris Dinehart from Dugout Mugs. Rick, Rick Hatcher from Florida Sports Museum. I mean, Ginger Kane, you know, who's now working with them, too, at the Florida Sports Hall of Fame. I mean, it was just the list goes on and on and on of such great people. My great friend, Richard Blanchard. And the what I wanted to say is this, is, you know, that's how life goes. Let me talk about Gary Sheffield, man. You know, God is amazing. And I'm not going to put any qualms to that. That's as simple as I can put it. God is amazing. Because look, I really, you know, Wade Boggs is there. This is my third year in a row going to that event. Wade Boggs is there three years in a row. I saw Wade Boggs about two weeks ago. No, about, about three weeks ago at a prior baseball event. But I really, I love seeing Wade Boggs. I love seeing everyone else. But the person I really wanted to talk to and interview was Gary Sheffield. And the reason being because, you know, for those who don't know, he had, was the last year on the ballot to go ahead and get enshrined into, you know, Cooperstown to be a Hall of Famer. It was his last 10th final year on the ballot. Now, Gary could still get on and win and make it to Cooperstown, which I'll get to a bit later. But it was his final year on the ballot, and he actually performed the best out of all of the years and his vote, his final tally was 63.9, so just under 64%. So for those who don't know, you have to be at least – you have to be 75% or better of the vote for you to be, you know, in trying to Cooperstown and become a Hall of Famer. So it was the best out of all the prior years, but it wasn't 75%. 63.9, just under 64. So he didn't make it to the Hall of Fame. Uh, You know, I did see some interviews as far as people, you know, asking him, but I, it's a little different. I wanted to kind of ask him and kind of feel face to face to kind of feel how his energy was, how his, 
you know, how he was doing with it. And my takeaway from it is that, you know, he's disappointed, but I could tell that his family is actually more disappointed than he is. And, and let me just give you my thoughts on it. I think Gary Sheffield is a Hall of Famer, both on and off the field. I've said that several times, even prior to seeing him on Wednesday. And the great thing about Gary Sheffield was that it kind of bought his life. Like he, I was expecting or hoping that he was going to be there right around 6.30 when the event started early where the sun was still out because I would have gotten better video of the interview. It didn't happen that way. You know, he went to his kid's game, which is showing you he's a great dad, and showed up right after the game. And he showed up around 9.10. The event ended at 9.30. But around 9.10, most of everybody left. Wade Boggs, all of the other major leaguers, with the exception of Dexter Jackson and the DJ, DJ Fresh, who was still playing music, pretty much – 80% 80% of the people had left by this time. 80, I would say 80, 85%. It was still about 20, 22 people, 25. It was winding down. It definitely was, it was, it was packed and it was winding down now. It was not like it was throughout the event. But I looked to the left and it's now nine plus o'clock and I have my bag on. I wasn't leaving yet, but I was getting ready to leave because pretty much I took a bunch of pictures. It was like nine ten. They started closing up some of – they didn't take down the uh, the backdrop yet, but they did take down some of the smaller tables. They took away all of the uh, the table ornaments and things like that. So, yeah, it was pretty much closing up shop. And I was by the front door. I turned to the left, and there's Gary Sheffield at 9, 10 p.m. The event, is the, the event was going to close at 9.30. And I shook his hand like he was like, I literally looked like this. And I was like, oh, snap. Wow. I didn't think he was going to show up. And I shook his hand like, you know, like, wow. Like, you know, he was right there. I was like, I shook his hand like glad he was there. But man, that's how life is. You got to you got to take it. And, you know, he was so gracious with everybody there, took pictures and autographs. And I asked for an interview. He did the interview. I'm going to release the interview with a video blog. The reason being is because I did get a bit, I wasn't totally in the frame. I should have, that was a mistake on my fault. I should have actually done a visual before. It was kind of dark, so I'll give myself a break on that. But yeah, I was a little bit out of the frame. I should have opened up the, see, sometimes when you try to be too perfect, I should have opened up the width of it and just let it roll like that. But you learn from mistakes. I did get the interview. You could see me. I am part, a good part of me is cut off. You can still see the mic. You can still see Gary. You can hear us great. It's just I was a bit cut off. But I'm going to include that with the video vlog of the event. I just think that with that video, that interview com- combined with some of the pictures and the way I'm envisioning it, it's going to come out great. So that's going to be something I'm going to put out. But yeah, with Gary Sheffield, I do think he's all a famer. The majority of people that talk about Gary Sheffield think he's a Hall of Famer. And the cool things about the interview, there's a lot of great things he discussed, but the cool things is that I did want to ask him about his thoughts on Dwight Gooden and Dow Strawberry, both of them getting their numbers retired this year. And, you know, his thoughts on that, because I know, you know, his uncle is Dwight Gooden. He's great friends with Daryl. I just wanted to get his thoughts on that. He's going to be at both. So that is awesome. That is awesome. I am definitely on my schedule going to make it to Daryl's, you know, Daryl's, you know, his uh, Jersey retirement. I cannot totally commit to Dwight's yet because it's a little bit earlier. It's, It's April. And I know that month I have to kind of play it by year. So, Definitely, though, I am looking at, I am going to Daryl's retirement. Definitely praying that I get those media credentials and I will be there. I'll be there too for Dwight Gooden, but I have to kind of, I know for sure I already put on the agenda for, for Dallas. I have to kind of see what, what 
Dwight couldn't. So that is definitely something that I'm trying to do like that to make it to both. <laughs> but it, it's it's going to be an outstanding day. And I definitely think you guys should go check it out. If you can't go physically, you should definitely watch it. It's going to be a fantastic day. Both are well-deserving of it. That's why I was glad that, I ran, that he showed up. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I always tell people, hey, when you show up to an event, get there early, be the last one to leave. Well, here was a perfect example of that because – had I left another five or 10 minutes later earlier, which I could have very well could have because the pictures at this point were pretty much done. Yeah. I would have missed out an opportunity. You know, sometimes when you go in the right and you're doing things the right way, an opportunity will present itself in the least likely situation. That you think you might have a thought of way it's going to happen envision it. And sometimes it doesn't go that way. Sometimes that's even for the better for you. I envision it being 6, 630. I'm getting there early. He's there. Do it while the sun is out. Get a plenty of light and everything. It happened even better than I expected. So have the faith. Keep the faith. And, yes, Dexter Jackson, Super Bowl MVP champion, was there too. And I just want to let people know that if you notice on my social media, when I post up stuff, you might see notice that on Instagram, the, I cut out a lot of the words just for people to know this. <laughs> they don't tell you this. When you are putting up professional pictures on Instagram and video, it can be nauseating and frustrating to deal with. And let me explain to you why, because if you put up a file, which I usually do that has a lot of megabytes, a lot of, you know, pixels in it. If you put too many words attached to that picture or the video, what will happen is you'll sit, submit. Instagram will reject it all over again. You got to get those pictures up. You got to put the video back up. You got to put the words back in. If you don't copy that words before you submit it, I've learned to copy everything like the words, then hit submit. But even then, they don't tell you exactly what you have to delete. Even though you're under the word count, it says 2,000 words, you only put 1,000, it can still reject your post. So on Instagram, when you put up a post, especially when you're putting up professional stuff with a lot of megapixels and video, you have to cut down the words. You have to, because the words are at a premium and the words can be the reason why you don't get your post put up. Even though you're well under the, the mark, if you put it too wordy, you have to redo it again. So I've learned through experience, if it's not really necessary, don't put it on Instagram, word-wise, like because words are a real premium. So Super Bowl champion MVP Dexter Jackson does not need he does not need an intro. Gary Sheffield does not need an intro either. Everybody knows who they are. So I did not put up. Dexter's credentials, he doesn't need them. So does it Gary Sheffield. Gary Sheffield walked in. It was 9, 10, 9, 15-ish at night. The vent is winding down, and everybody knew who Gary Sheffield was. Late at night, lights are getting darker. Everybody knew who he was. I mean, I was the first person who saw him and shook his hand. But I'm telling you, everybody afterwards knew who he was. And they were glad to see him just like I was. I was literally at the front talking to someone. I was another 10 minutes. I was going to leave nine ten. I was going to leave in about another 10 minutes and that was going to be it. So I'm glad I didn't leave because I'd have been like really disappointed in myself. If I left early. Don't, don't check out early. Be the first one there, last one to leave. And if I stayed another 10 minutes, I wouldn't have technically been the last one to leave, but I would have been one of the last people to leave. They basically were, they were breaking down stuff. That's what they were doing, except for the backdrop. I guess they would do that last, but I was in the event. And only other thing I want to say on that is make sure you guys show up. So we're going to switch gears and now talk a little bit about the NFL news with uh, should the Bears draft Caleb Williams first? And what type of players should they expect? 
and also what does the QB situation in, in uh, for the Bears look like? Well, I, I would say it like this, and things got very interesting. Let me start with like the Caleb Williams stuff. The fact that they got rid of Justin Fields, when I say got rid of, they traded him for pretty much nothing. Definitely boats high that they're going to probably take Caleb Williams first. I know that's not rocket science to say that, but by default, it's going to be hard for the, the Bears to pass on Caleb Williams, the fact that you got rid of Justin Fields. And to me, you got rid of him for, for pretty much nothing. Justin Fields is an outstanding quarterback. He really is. The Bears may not see his value, but I do. The guy's a fantastic quarterback. To get rid of, to move along for just such nothing, basically, is just mind-boggling. I'm going to be real with you. I don't think Caleb Williams is a better option than, than what they had. I, I just, being real, I just think that there's more prima donna type stuff and and I know he's listening to his people, but I don't know if his people are advising him the best way. I just feel like when you try to play the system a little too much and try to be too cute, it doesn't usually end well for you. Because remember, the perception of people does matter because now people are perceiving you as being somebody's high maintenance and somebody who doesn't really like to work in a team system. It may be different, but it doesn't give that impression. It seems like you're about you. And if it's not your way, you're going to try to fight the system. Well, as an NFL quarterback, there's going to be some things that are not going to go your way. Guy's going to drop some passes. Coach is going to give you some instruction. That might be, you may not like to hear. He might want you to throw it a certain way. He might want you to speed up your, your past more than your, you're going to be uncomfortable. So be used to being uncomfortable from your comfort zone when you're an NFL quarterback. That's just the way it is. And I just, I just see red flags with Caleb Williams in the fact that I don't think he's going to be as receptive to that. I, I just don't see that on him. I, I it Maybe it will happen in time, but I think right now, I think he's going to have to go through that process of getting humbled and then he might listen. I just don't see where Justin Fields, I feel like he's willing to take instruction. That's big. So I do have concerns with this. If I'm the Bears, I, I definitely do. But I think by default, because of what you've done, you may not have a better option now because now if you don't draft them, people are going to say, hey, why didn't you draft them? You know, it's like now you to put yourself, you box yourself in a hole now. So, if you kept Justin Fields, then you have you're in a better, much better bargaining position because then you're not you don't have to draft them, so to speak. Now you almost have to do it first if you're the Bears because it's going to be from a PR standpoint not going to be good. But yes, I do think at the end of the day, the Bears are going to you know basically they're going to draft Caleb Williams first and they're going to. They don't really have an option at this point. I think that's where it's going to happen. I think I, – I definitely do think they – they their front office got to really they, – they do some head-scratching stuff. On top of that, you know, Russell Wilson now got competition now. So <laughs> I think it'll be friendly competition, but it definitely is competition with him and Justin Fields. Like I thought Russell was going to be the game one starter – now that they brought Justin Fields in there, it's, it's going to be competition. I, I don't think it's going to be a slam dunk on either side, but I do think if, if Justin Fields really comes in with the mindset that this guy is competing for the same position as I want, and he comes in hungry instead of, hey, can I get Russell Wilson to sign this or a fan of Russell? Then if you come in as a fan of Russell, Russell's going to get the job. If you come in as a top tier competitor, you want to be cordial but you also want to make sure you compete for that job at the fullest. I think Justin Fields gets it. You know, this is where you have to kind of separate the fan from the player. And just like me, when I do media, I have to separate the fan from, you know, the player. That's what it is, you know, and 
If he does that, I think Justin Fields is going to have a great shot of winning that job. But he has to come in hungry. Because I know Russell's going to be hungry, and he's a vet. He's crafty. He's going to be prepared. So you have to come in and step your game. This is a great test for Justin Fields to see, hey, do I still belong in this league? You belong if you treat the guy with respect, but you compete hard for that position. And we'll see how it goes. So we're going to switch gears and talk about about the AFL. Yeah, we'll give some AFL some props here. Talk about the AFL news. That's right. So guess what, folks? You guys have been asking. They have delivered. The Louisiana Voodoo have now the tickets available, and I'm looking at them right here on Ticketmaster. So you have no excuses for those people who are hungry. Tickets start at $10 up to 100 and, of course, you know, with Ticketmaster's fees. <laughs> but, yes, you can get some great seats here. I mean, if you're on a tight budget, $10 a seat. If you want if you got some money, you want to sit up close, you got some great opportunities. So check it out, Ticketmaster, type in Louisiana, Voodoo's, and you're going to go ahead and chance to, to get those tickets. And, uh, you know, not only that, you have the – the Firebirds also, that's a that's a team that a league that I'm, team I'm connected to as well. You get them as well. Support. The cool thing about the AFL is that these games will be on the NFL network. So that is gonna be really cool because now you get a chance to enjoy some of this football that would you would have to actually go to the games to. And you can go to the games, you should go out support, but you have an option to watch on the NFL network. That's outstanding for for AFL. So round of applause for the AFL for what they're doing and the fact that Louisiana Voodoo's got their the tickets are available. Yeah, so that's that's awesome. Get those tickets and go ahead. The Louisiana Voodoo there versus the Philadelphia Soul. It's a home game. Lake Charles Event Center, Saturday, April 27th at 6.30 p.m. That's a great time for you guys, you know, late at night. So you, if you got to do some yard work, you can make the night game. So that's awesome. Go out there and support. Remember, if you don't support, don't get mad if the team leaves. You know, a lot of times people, you know, I see this with the XFL, with the Orlando Guardians. I'm glad that I brought that subject up. Hey, you know what, cry me a river if you don't support your team and they leave. You know, there's no guarantees to year two, three, four, five. Same thing with like a restaurant. If you don't support, that favorite restaurant of yours is going to close up. You got to support. Not only do you have to support, you have to do more than that. You have to tell your friends about the experience. You have to share it. Invite them to come out. Have them follow them. Say, hey, I recommend this, 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 this. Go out there and support and they, they go ahead and do the same. You got to support. So if your team ends up leaving and you didn't support them, too bad, too sad. Because when it came to the Orlando Guardians, believe me and you, I was putting up posts like there was no tomorrow, and I was getting a lot of crickets on the other end. So, yes, definitely, definitely, definitely go out and support. Go ahead and do that. And – you're going to make sure that if you go ahead and support, you got to play from here and see how it goes. And definitely. So don't, don't cry to me if your team leaves because you are still part of your league and just go out there and support, see how it happens. Support Louisiana, support the Firebirds, support the, you know, what I'm going to get to, and that's going to be the UFL. So we're going to switch gears and talk about the UFL. I'm going to give you guys some insight on this. So the UFL officially starts off March 30th, which is going to be next Saturday. We're down to the nitty gritty. Next Saturday is game one. And guess who will be in the house of game one? That would be me. I will be there game one cheering on and supporting and covering the event. So look forward to that. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit. But before we do that, let's go ahead and bring on a great caller. 
Let's do that. Hey, how you doing? Good. How are you? Doing wonderful. Thank you for asking. I'm glad to hear from you. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Everything's good with you? Yes, everything's good with you. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. That's Thankfully, it is. So, that's that's fantastic. And, man, you know, I was thinking about you because what do you think about Shoei Artani, the, you know, the interpreter stealing it from, from the baseball player? Allegedly. Really, perfect true. <laughs> yeah, you know, it doesn't look good. I thought that when it came to stuff like this, it only happened in the States, but apparently it happens anywhere, you know, where you have yeah, money. Yeah, it can happen anywhere. <laughs> yeah, well, because of money and greed, people, it's uh, uniform, it's nationwide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But to think, to, but you to think to steal from your own player. Yeah, I mean that's that you know Shohei Otani signed a huge mega contract, and this is sometimes when it happens: more money, more problems. Yeah, you yep. think if I can give an interpreter, you think he can do that? <laughs> Exactly. Like, you know, this guy is supposed to, you know, he's got a great position because you're interpreting with the biggest star in Major League Baseball right now. It's not good enough. He needed that money. You know, allegedly that's what happened. Yep. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know. And do you think um, Caleb Williams going to go first in the draft with the quarterback for the Bears? Uh, yes. Yeah, I think so, too. I think uh, being that they got rid of Justin Fields, I think it's pretty much a slam dunk that unless Caleb Williams does something really bad, I think he's going to be drafted first by the Chicago Bears. Mm -hmm. you, heard it here. you heard it here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show first. And mm -hmm. Yeah, so you, you're going to be on the call tomorrow? Yes, of course oh, I man. am. There you go. Make sure you're on that phone call because I'm going to be on there too. And mm -hmm. how come we don't ever see you on the YouTube? I, do you? It's always Lou. Do I go on I, I go on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Um, I just got to the channels. <laughs> But, yeah, make sure you guys support Lou and call in tomorrow, 512-543-4662. Again, it's 512-543-4662. Make sure you guys support it. Make sure you make it the biggest week that he's ever had. It's from 4 to 6. 4 to 6, that's right. 4 to 6 Eastern Standard Time Zone. Make sure you call in. Tomorrow, between 4 and 6, Eastern Standard Time Zone, you'll see Lou. You'll hear from Diane, too. Definitely. Yep. I'm looking forward to it. So, definitely, mm -hmm. I'm glad you called in. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome, Diane. Always a pleasure. I really tremendously appreciate you. Mm -hmm. You have a lovely night and a great weekend. I'll look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Yep. You too, right. Alan. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Appreciate you. Bye bye now. Appreciate you too. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye now. You're welcome. Bye -bye. That's so awesome. Always fantastic to hear from Diane. The Head Sports Show. You know, when I get a call from both of them, I know that my day has been outstanding because to get to hear from both of them is wonderful. It's it's definitely such a blessing, and man, it's so wonderful to hear from Diana and Lou. It makes my whole night. So, I, I did want to talk some UFL news, and the UFL news is I will be covering Game One. I will be covering Game One for the UFL. I'm excited about it, and I'm gonna come there. What's it? Open mind, open heart. Be Allen like like how, how I am and see what 
God has a store for me. Because look, I, you know, I've said it before, you know, that things have been very different covering, going into covering the XFL versus the XFL. When I was covering the XFL, I was, you know, 25, somewhat 30 interviews into it. Really got a good gauge of how the team was and things of that nature. It is very different this year, but we don't make excuses. We go ahead and be the Allen who you are come game one and see what happens from there. You know, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going down to Texas. That is the reason why I haven't actually done training camp because I plan on being at game one. God has blessed me. I'm going to be at game one. And it was going to be logistically tough for me to go to Texas and then turn back around in two, maybe three weeks later and come back to Texas. It's just logistically, I was, it was tough, tough for me. This is one of the downfalls of the Orlando Guard is leaving is that you don't have a team that's local. Everything is out of state. So for me to go to Texas, to go check them out in training camp, which I thought about, they come back, they go back in two weeks, maybe three, was just logistically too much. I just said, you know what, I'll wait till game one. I had a lot of stuff here, right where I'm at, right where my feet is at, that kept me occupied. So that's what happened. I don't apologize for that because, hey, I'm doing the best I can to, to give you guys as much content as I can. Sometimes it works out the schedule. Sometimes it doesn't. Logistically, it was tough. And Texas is not right around the corner for me. You know, I'm here in Tampa, Florida. And plus, I had a lot of stuff to do at home. So it works out. I'm going to come to game one with an open mind. Come there and have a great time. Cover game one. I'm excited to see a lot of familiar faces. I'm going to see a lot of new faces and familiar. But I will be ready to go and I will cover game one. We will go from there. That's that's how I'm going to do. Cover game one, go from there and see how it goes. No expectations. No, you know, clean slate. No expectations. Go out there and do a fantastic job of game one and see how it goes. Sometimes in life, you just got to go ahead and see what God has in store for you. Remember, he's in the driver's seat, not me. That's him. So cover game one. I'm excited about it. For those who don't know, it's going to be the Arlington Renegades who won the championship. The last time I was at an Expo game was a championship game. So cool thing is I will be seeing a lot of people face-to-face that I did see on the field in San Antonio. And they're, they're going against the Birmingham Stallions. That's a team in a league that I haven't covered before, the U, USFL. But, hey, I'm going to go ahead and make it happen, make it work, and have a great time. So I'm going to be at game one, going to see how it goes. I'm going to give you guys some insight. And, you know, I did see they did post up where the first game, there's a discount of 20% on some of those tickets. So please check out the tickets at theufl.com, theufl.com. You get those tickets right there. Got a discount there. So if you live in the Texas area, you think about going, Hey, you can snag a discount last minute. Usually you don't catch discounts on tickets the last minute. You got that opportunity. So definitely come on down. You'll see me there. And, you know, that's going to be next Saturday. I'll share those insights and see how it goes. And then we're going to go ahead and talk some boxing news. So the big thing that happened this past week is that Keith Thurman, unfortunately, got an injury, a bicep injury. He had to withdraw from the fight with Tim Zhu. I saw a lot of comments, a lot of opinions, but let me give you my take on this. And I have actually had the pleasure and honor of interviewing Keith one time Thurman here on the show. At that time, it was called the Allen and Aaron Sports Talk Show, but I was the one who actually interviewed him one on one. So I will tell you this much. Okay, I don't doubt for a moment that the injury is real. Okay, I don't think it was fake. He didn't, you know, Keith is not that type of person. I had, I legitimately know he got injured because Antonio Tarver, somebody who I have also interviewed, was there and he actually witnessed during sparring the injury. So the injury is real. 
There's there's no faking. There's not him trying to get out of a fight. No, Keith got injured. I hate to say this, but I think this is an opportunity for Keith to kind of reevaluate. Reevaluate. Because to me, this fight against Tim Zhu was high risk, to say the least. And yes, I do think with him working with Antonio Tarver, he probably could have worked off some of the ring rust. I'll give him that. But it still doesn't prepare you for getting hit with somebody who's got heavy hands. Tim Zhu has heavy hands, and he's a pressure fighter. This is, to me, to, you know, Keith taking his fight is more like an over, kind of like, you know, you haven't done something in so long, you haven't done a job, so you kind of like over embellish to try to impress your supervisor because you haven't been doing the work for quite a big long time, so you try to catch up and overwork yourself, overdo it, overstretch, overcompensate for lost time. You know, time doesn't work for anyone. Keith Thurman has been in- inactive, to say the least, over the last three years. In fact, the last time I've interviewed him, to this point now, which, man, I interviewed him about over three years ago. Going to fight Manny Pacquiao. To this point now, he, is, he has not been in the ring enough. And when you do this and you stay this long inactive, you get strains, you get pulls, you get things like this. Age start catching up to you. Ring rust. And I just think Tim Zhu was going to be way too much for him to start to get to, to be out of ring for very long, jump in the ring and fight Tim Zhu. I, I just felt in a heavier weight class than what you normally fight at was just over overcompensation. And it was going to not end well for him. He might have done better than what people may have expected him to do against Tim Zhu, but ultimately it was going to be a loss for Keith Thurman. There's no way I could see there be any other situation than Keith Thurman losing that fight. So with this injury, he should heal up. I would say fight a fight or two because to me, this is not a good fight. And if you get healed from that bicep injury, and then you think you're going to sign up with Tim Zhu and beat him, you have to be realistic. It's even more overcompensation. So I, I just think that as much as I, I really appreciate and I'm a fan of Keith as far as of the guy, the person, just evaluating the boxing talent and what I've seen, I just don't think it would have been a good situation for Keith if this fight would have continued to go on. I really don't. I think here's an opportunity for you to maybe repivot after your injury, take somebody who's in your weight class at 147, fight a guy or two, then maybe you know circle back to Tim Zhu. If you circle back to him after this injury, right after this injury, it's not going to bode well for you. Too much inactivity. Another thing that I would say, you know, from what I've seen of Keith Thurman, what I've known, is he wastes too much time jaw jacking with opportunities that are not really realistic. You threw it out there to fight Bud Crawford right after he beat and washed Errol Spence. (laughs) It was very glaring and obvious that Bud Crawford was not going to fight Keith Thurman after washing Errol Spence. What advantage, what does Keith, what does, uh, does Bud Crawford get out of this? And not that I think that, I don't know, I don't think uh, Keith Thurman would have beat Bud Crawford at all, but he spent months and months trying to lure him and do social media to try to get him to fight, that be Bud Crawford, to take that bait. And of course, smartly, Bud did not take the bait. He said it right off the bat, I'm not fighting you. I'm looking for other opportunities. Keith should have moved on. But he was in that thing. I'm going to fight. He really, in his mind, believed that Bud Crawford, even after saying no, was going to change his mind and fight Keith. First of all, Keith was not, in my opinion, deserving of that fight at that time. He still is not deserving of that fight at uh, this time. Yes, Errol Spence got washed, but Errol Spence was 
in the position to fight him. You are way behind in activity, resume, and beyond. You're not there. You're thinking in the past. And to Bud Crawford's credit, he he was far right. Said, "I'm not going to fight you." He didn't. He didn't pull no punches. At that point, it would have been a great opportunity to repivot and fight and offer to fight somebody else. What did Keith do instead? He went on social media for months trying to bait Bud into a fight. And it was just wasting time, wasting breath, wasting energy when you could have been looking other places. That's one of the things that I take away from Keith. He spends too much time jaw jacking, too much time, you know, hyping things up, and he stays too much time trying to lure fights that he is not really, in most cases, really there. So this brings a pivot to the change. I do think Sebastian is going to be a tougher fighter for Tim Zhu, but I think if, which I do think Tim Zhu is going to get an opportunity, Tim Zhu gets an opportunity to hit him, I don't see. I don't think it's gonna get. And well, I think Tim Zhu's gonna win this fight. It's gonna be a different look because he's so tall, and it's not the fighter you expected. So, I expect him to try to keep him on the outside. But I just don't think Sebastian's defense is good enough. Eventually, Tim Zhu is gonna get an opportunity inside, and he's gonna hit him with some good punches with the power punching power. And I just don't think Sebastian's gonna survive that. I don't think he's gonna win this fight. I think it'll be probably a different look. It might last longer than Keith. It might look, it's going to look very different than Keith, but eventually I do think Tim Zhu is going to win. And if he does win this fight, which I do anticipate Tim Zhu to win this fight, he's going to have a big name on his resume here in the States. That's going to really build up a stock. Third, which I anticipate he probably was going to, that would have really built up a stock. But either way, his stock's going to rise. I got Tim Zhu winning the fight. I just don't think fighting him from the outside is going to be enough with Sebastian's power. And I think Tim Zhu is going to find an opportunity because the defense is lacking a bit with Sebastian. He's going to give an opportunity, and he's going to get hit, and it's going to it's not going to end well. So I got Tim Zhu winning the fight. I'm going to keep you guys posted on a lot of great things. But, yes, I did want to go ahead and – Thank our great sponsor. Let me go ahead and do that. Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. So delicious and addicting. You may need a support group. Definitely feel free to visit Chef G's right here at 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. And if you can't come down to Tampa, visit us right here. Visit Chef G's right at flbbqsauce.com. And that's flbbqsauce.com. Don't forget that great sauce. So we're going to go ahead and play Cola Chef G's Barbecue Sauce song. We're going to do that right now. And make sure you guys, while we're playing the song, you go ahead and get a flbbqsauce.com. Get yourself those, uh, get yourself a four-pack. So let me go ahead and play that song right now. And we're going to crank this baby right on up. Thank you, Sam Scola, for this great song. And we're going to go ahead and play that right now. Chef G's Counting for the variety, Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce, a natural flavor. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce, Florida gold honey mustard on burgers and ribs. Tasty fusion on pork and sausage. Classic taste for chicken steak tips. A hot heat wave on meatballs and ham. It's a cookout treat. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Serve on fish and vegetables. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce 
barbecue sauce so delicious and addicting, you may need a support group. Feel free to visit Chef D's right there in Tampa, Florida. FLBBQSauce.com. FLBBQSauce.com. Come on down to 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. And I'm going to go ahead and have some great breakfast small with the one and only legend, Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. That's right. That's a great way to start the day. And in fact, folks, make sure you don't forget all of Samsung Scola songs are available on YouTube and Spotify. YouTube and Spotify. Want to thank songwriter Sam Scola and his beautiful wife, Mary. Came back from vacation. More to come. And definitely, if you want to reach out to Sam Scola, make sure you do that right there. Sing along with Sam at gmail.com. Sing along with Sam at gmail.com. I love that time. Sing along with Sam at gmail.com. So make sure you guys support. So, yes, and don't forget to follow right here at Instagram, Alan Alford and underscore. Twitter, it's Alan Alford. And at the Facebook page where you can see a lot of the great photos, Alan Alford Sports Talk Show. So definitely don't forget to do that. Subscribe to the Alan Alford on YouTube. And definitely it's going to be a great time. Looking forward to next week's show, next Friday, same bad time, same bad place. So until we meet again, be blessed, be well, and definitely take care of yourself. And thank you so much for watching and also listening to the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. Be blessed. Be well. Have a fantastic weekend, folks. I will see you again. Take care for now. We're going to end the song, the show, with another great song by Sam Scola. And that is the end of the show song. And it's always been a pleasure with you guys. Be blessed. Be well. Till we meet again. Thank you so much for watching the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. Oh